Hi guys, today we're going to talk about the lumbar spine. Um, one of the most common areas to have back pain for people. So just as a reminder, here is the vertebral column. The cervical and the lumbar spines are anteriorly convex and they're secondary curves. I know that was confusing on the last quiz, but these are correct. I've looked them up a couple of times just to be sure I got it right. So cervical and lumbar are anteriorly convex and they are secondary curves. Thoracic and sacrum coccyx or the pelvic curve are anteriorly concave and primary curves. So today we're going to talk about the lumbar spine down here. There are five lumbar vertebrae, increasing in size from L1 to L5. Remember, you count from the top to the bottom. And the lumbar spine is responsible for uh, strength and stability in your, in your body. And the load increases from um, inferiorly into the sacrum. And the sacrum is the center of your body base of support. So remember we were talking about in patient care how your base of support is centered right there at the sacrum. So the increasing size helps with the stability of the lower back and carrying the load of your body. So the um, lumbar vertebrae are very similar to the uh, thoracic the difference being the vertebral body is a little thicker and the anterior and lateral surfaces are concave from the top to the bottom the transverse processes are a little bit shorter and smaller than the thoracic are and the lumbar pedicles are very strong and they are directly posterior from the vertebrae uh, body. So you can see here how they come straight back. Um, also you can see here where the concavity is on the, ver on the vertebral body. The spinous processes are a little bit thicker and larger than the other uh, vertebrae in the spine. Just like all the other vertebral bodies, you have the body of the, the vertebrae and you have the, the vertebral arch back here. So you know these are the pedicles, these are the lamina, spinous process, superior articular process, inferior articular process transverse process and the, ver the vertebral foramen. The projections that you're going to do that are pretty standard are the AP, the lateral, and the lateral L5-S1 spot view. Um, optionally you're going to do AP oblique views, RPO and LPO. Sometimes you'll do flexion and extension. There are some um, extra views with the scoliosis series that you'll do, and there are some bending views side to side laterally, and there's um, AP axial at L5 that shows the L5S1 a little bit better. As far as the patient prep, you're going to want to get them dressed um, everything off except for their underwear and their socks. Be sure they don't have any jewelry on, any belly button rings, any decoration on their underwear, things like that. No bras because they're, that will show up over the T-spine, the hooks or the underwire. You need, so you need to have those off. That will definitely be in the area of interest. As far as shielding, you're going to shield all males. Um, the, and females cannot be shielded due to the area of interest. There's just no way that a shield wouldn't block some of the spine that the radiologists are going to want to see. Um, you're going to shield everyone on the lateral views though and you need to have a posterior shield on the table behind the patient that helps to reduce the scatter and gives you much better detail on your images. Sometimes the um, spinous processes can get burned out 
And if you have that lead shield behind the patient on the table to block the scatter, you're going to get a little better detail on those spinous processes. APL spine. Patient position is supine. Um, it's unusual to do those upright, but you can do them upright if you if you have to. But supine is usually the way you do them. Standard SID is 40 inches. Merrill's says 48 inches. That helps to reduce distortion and open the intervertebral disc spaces a little bit better. Um, but you may see 40 inches out at the clinical sites. Just know for your national exam that you're going to have maybe say for it may say 48 inches and not 40. Uh, you'll use a 14 by 17 image receptor and you breathing instructions will be expiration and that's typical for all of your most all of your L spine views are going to be on expiration. You want to line the patient up in the middle of the image receptor and you're going to use mid-sagittal plane for your center line. You want to be sure and have your hips and shoulders all in the same horizontal plane. So look at the patient from the head of the table or the foot of the table to make sure that they're not lying down crooked on the table. You want to have them as straight as possible. You want to be sure when you lay them down to have them uh, bend their knees and flex their hips up because they're going to be uncomfortable laying on the table like that. And when you have them bend their knees, it helps to open up the um, intervertebral disc spaces a little bit lower. Central ray is going to be perpendicular to Im image receptor. Uh, sometimes, you're depending on where you are, they're going to want you to center uh, one and a half inches above the iliac crest for your horizontal line. Uh, otherwise, you're going to center right at the crest. So right at the iliac crest is L4, and just above that, an inch and a half above that, is at about L3. Collimation-wise, you're going to have it about half the size of the 14 by 17. So half the 14 inches would be seven inches. I think Merrill says eight, but you want your width of your collimation to be pretty narrow. You want to make sure you include the SI joints and the lateral edges of the psoas muscle. When you're looking at your images to evaluate them, you want to make sure that you see collimation uh, narrow like I was just saying. Also you want to have the lower thoracic vertebrae. You can tell when it's the thoracic because you can see the 12th floating rib right here. So you know that is T12. L1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. You have you want to see your intervertebral disc spaces open. You want to make sure you're centered centering horizontally just above the, the crest or right at the crest. Your marker is going to be upper either the on the right side or the left side and the reason for that is that you want to make sure because you know that they get wider toward the bottom than they are at the top and you're, you don't want your marker in the pelvis. You want it to be up and out of the way away from the vertebrae. You want to look at the spinous processes to make sure they're right down the center. That tells you that you've got the patient straight. There's no rotation. And one of the reasons the patients have to take everything off here is because the elastic waistbands are going to show up right across their middle. And you can usually see the, the strips of elastic along there. There looks like uh, lines through there and the, the radiologists don't need to see that kind of an artifact on their images. Lateral L-spine, the patient's going to be lying on their left side 
Um, typically it's the left side. It just gives you the ability to see the patient from the back to look and make sure that their spine is straight. You, you want to put something under their waist, a radiolucent sponge or towels, something under their waist to support it so that the spine is straight and horizontal as you look at it. When you roll them onto their side, you want to be sure that their hips and their shoulders stay in the same plane so that they're pretty straight. Uh, the arms are going to be forward um, from the shoulders and the elbows are going to be bent. So kind of like a praying position so their, their um, arms and shoulders are forward and out of the way. Your knees are going to be bent and the hips are going to be flexed. It's a good idea. You can see in the picture they put a sponge between the patient's knees. It's a good idea for comfort if you can put that sponge between their knees as well. Um, this is the shielding that I was talking about. You can shield um, the patient in this lateral view. And here's the lead shield that goes behind the patient that's going to help reduce the scatter so you get a better image. The lateral view specifically for seeing the um, intervertebral foramina and the intervertebral disc spaces. You can see your spinal alignment as well. Central ray is going to be perpendicular to the image receptor. Um, you're going to center again at L4 at the iliac crest or maybe slightly above. And um, if your plane of your spine is not horizontal, so when you're looking at the patient from the back and you're looking at their spine to make sure that it's flat, if it's not flat, you're going to have to do a slight caudal angle to compensate for that so that you can see directly through the intervertebral disc spaces or they'll be obscured and it won't look straight. Five degrees typically for men, eight degrees for women because obviously hips are a little bit wider in women than they are in men typically. So you might have to just look at their spine. You may have to do a cephalad angle depending on the angle of their spine. So if it's a man with really broad shoulders and really narrow hips, it may go down inferior from um, superior to inferior looking at it instead of horizontal, then you're going to have to go so that your central ray is perpendicular to the spine, whichever angle that's going to be. Usually it's a caudad angle, five to eight degrees. It doesn't take a lot. Collimation is the same, seven or eight inches wide, and you're centered at the mid coronal plane. And be sure to use that lead because you can see it's hard to see the spinous processes back here. And in deciding if these are correct, also the marker is going to be upper outer or um, anterior down at the bottom here. As long as you're pretty sure you can keep it out of the way. You want it in the anteriorly because if you put it posteriorly, it's going to burn out completely. We're not going to be able to see it. So it needs to be somewhere in the anatomy here so that it shows up in the image. So we want to see your good collimation. We want to see from the lower thoracic all the way down to the sacrum. The vertebrae need to be aligned. The intervertebral foramina need to be open. No rotation. You can see that up in the ribs or sometimes you can see it in the intervertebral spaces if they're not open very well. Superimposed posterior margins of each vertebral body is going to help you also see the rotation. Spinous processes need to be in profile.